And now for the call to discipleship. <laughs> Let us pray. Dear God, our Father, by your Son, Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we come before you. You brought us through a week. You showed us some good times and you helped us through the struggles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You enable us to laugh from time to time, but then there were times when you helped us cry. Yeah. Oh, we just come together today to say thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you because you brought us through. Thank you. Because you've answered our prayers. Because you fixed it, that which was broken. Yes. Thank you, God, because you made ways where there were no ways. You brought us out of the darkness into the light. Most of all, we thank you because you gave your son Jesus, who you sent to Calvary. There he died and paid our debts. And then that Sunday morning, he got up from the grave with power. Well, it's that power that we're depending on today. It's that power that we're asking you to engage on our behalf. I come, Lord, praying for these, your children. There are many needs, many requests, but I know you're able to I believe you're willing to take care of each and every one. Will you now, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, answer the prayers of your children? Will you heal those who are sick? Touch the bodies of those who are feeling pain, whose bodies are diseased, who have some kind of Sickness, who are not feeling well. They don't know what's wrong, but they know something's not right. Will you move through the hospitals and nursing homes and residences? And Lord, probably somebody came to church today not feeling well. But they believed that they came to the house of the Lord, they'd receive a blessing. Yeah. Give them that blessing now, if you will, in the name yeah. of Jesus. We, we have no doubt about your ability or your willingness to bless us. We just call upon you. We call upon the name of Jesus and, and ask that you would move in our situation. Somebody, it's not sickness, but for somebody there's some other problem. Some relationship is on the verge of being broken. Some marriage is on the verge of being broken. Some brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers are, are having problems and people are not seeing eye to eye. Some churches are on the verge of, of breaking apart, Lord, but we know that the church yeah. belongs to you. Oh. It's yours. And you said not even yeah. the gates of hell could stand against it. And we believe you and we're counting on you now yeah. to do whatever you need to do to make things right yeah. so that we can be that beacon of light where people will see it and, and come to you and ask, yeah. what must I do to be yeah. saved? Let us feel your presence, Lord. Let us feel your power, Lord. We don't just want your presence to be in the temple. We need your presence in every heart, in every mind, in every body, in every soul. We thank you for it. We count it done. Whatever your children right here are asking for, whatever those who hear this prayer are asking for, we count it done. 
Bless every home, every individual, every church striving to do your will. Do it now. Answer our prayers now. Do it now. Do it for us. Not because we deserve it, but because we're pitiful. Not because we deserve it, but because we're your children. We claim the victory. We count it done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the King. And amen. And amen. situation to me. Nothing to lose and everything to gain. Amen. We have been preaching from the Old Testament for several weeks. But today we turn our attention to the New Testament Gospel of Luke for our text. Luke chapter 5 verses 12 and 13. Luke chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. These are the words of today's text. And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. I want to talk about God can and he will. God can and he will. Yes. If the truth be told, the average person, even the average Christian, does not think much about whether God created the universe. What we are more concerned about is when our universe is falling apart, can and will God put the pieces back together? I don't think that many people stay up at night contemplating whether God made man in his image and breathed into him the breath of life. But if and when the EMT at the scene of a medical emergency starts chest compressions, or the doctor in a hospital room calls code blue because one's heart has stopped beating and his lungs are not functioning, we want to know that God will breathe into us the breath of life again and prevent us from dying and going to our grave. You may disagree with me, but I think in general, people who believe in God are more concerned about what God can and will do for them than anything else. That's evidenced by our prayer lives. Don't you pray more often and with more intensity and with more desire for a response from God when you are troubled than when things are going well? When we are doing all right, God is. When we have serious problems, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I do not say that in an attempt to belittle anyone. I just want to make the point that we are not self-made nor self-sufficient beings. We depend on God for everything, especially when we have reached our human limitations. We need God to keep us from failing. And we need God to help us when we've already failed. We need God to deliver us from troubles and to rescue us from danger. We need him for the necessities of life. We need God for everything. I want to remind you today of both God's ability and 
his willingness to care for you, especially in your times of distress, when there's nothing that you can do. God wants you to know that he can and will see you through. In our text, a man who was stricken with a disease called leprosy approached Jesus one day and said to him, if you will, you can make me clean. Notice that he does not ask Jesus a question. He does not ask Jesus to heal him. He rather makes a statement. He tells what he believes and knows about Jesus' ability and his caring spirit. Jesus responds, I will. And at the same time, Jesus touched the man and the disease immediately left his body. I want to point out from this text that whatever happens to you, God is able and willing to take care of you. Yeah. Yeah. Then I want to ask you a question with the hope that you'll consider your options and make the right decisions if you haven't already. At the time of the text, as well as for thousands of years prior and many years afterwards, leprosy was a most notorious disease. It attacked the skin and the flesh underneath the skin. Yeah. This bacterial infection caused discoloration and inflammation of tissue. It caused corruption of muscle tissue. It, and in the worst cases, it ate away at the flesh and bones, causing them to fall off of the body. Leprosy was highly contagious, and there was no cure for it. No medications were effective, so people who became infected were quarantined from others. Leprosy was a plague. It was different from other diseases, so much worse in its effect on the human body than other diseases, so much more hideous than other diseases, and so impossible to cure that the Jewish people viewed the disease as a mark of God's punishment for some sin which one had committed. As such, doctors did not examine people who had leprosy. The Jewish priest did. Leprosy was so strongly considered a consequence of sinning against God that laws were made specifically for people who contracted the disease Read the Old Testament book of Leviticus, chapters 13 and 14. 116 verses of scripture are dedicated to laws concerning script, uh, leprosy and what people should do if infected. Strict instructions were given related to examining people with leprosy and what was to be done when it was determined that they had the disease. Notice this. The law identified leprosy. The law pronounced the person unclean who had leprosy. The law social distanced the people from others who had leprosy, but the law could not cure the person of leprosy. The law could not heal the leprosy. The law had the authority to declare one a leper, but it had no power to make a person well. Yeah. Such is the law concerning sin. That's important because sin is the leprosy of the soul. And just like the laws concerning leprosy, the laws recorded in the Old Testament concerning sin identify sin, they give punishment for sin, they distance the sinner from God, but the laws cannot atone for our sins. They cannot restore our fellowship with God. The laws cannot cleanse us from our sins. It can't take away our sin nature. It can't stop us from committing sin. But the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 5 and 20, 
Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but when sin abounded, grace did much more abound. In other words, God, through his grace, employed his power to free us from the punishment of our own sins. When someone was infected, the person was required to cry out to others, unclean, to warn them not to come close because he was a carrier of leprosy. But unclean was not what the man in the text called out to Jesus. He did not try to warn Jesus to keep his distance. He urgently called Jesus to come nearer. He honored Jesus, kneeling down before him and said to the Lord, If you will, you can cleanse me. It's interesting that the man did not ask Jesus to heal him. He told Jesus, though, what he believed. His statement clearly says that he believed that Jesus was able, that he had the power, that he had the ability to make him well. It also says his getting healed depends on whether it's Jesus' will. He believed that Jesus has the power to heal. But he's praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Thy will be done. It gives the impression that he may not be sure if Jesus will have compassion on him and make him whole. This leper's statement grabbed my attention when I read it. it. It validates something that I realized long ago that we often talk about what God can do, but the greater blessing for us is in what God will do. When the leper approaches Jesus, it's within the first months of Jesus' ministry. He hasn't been long since John baptized Jesus and the Holy Ghost sat upon him and God declared that Jesus was his son in whom he was well pleased. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all record this conversation between Jesus and the man with leprosy. If their writings are chronologically correct, which we have every reason to believe they are, most of the healings and other miracles which Jesus did have not occurred yet. But the leper is convinced that Jesus can heal him. He declares his conviction that that Jesus is able. He has no doubt that Jesus can cure him. Why he believes so strongly, we don't know. Maybe he saw Jesus heal someone from a distance and believes that Jesus can heal him too. Maybe he heard someone talking about a healing that Jesus had performed And so he believes that Jesus can heal him too. Maybe he heard Jesus teaching the Sermon on the Mount, which Matthew recorded, this conversation, and healing follows it. And he is convinced maybe by what Jesus taught that Jesus could heal him. Regardless of his reasons, he clearly believes that Jesus can heal him. Yes. My question to you today is, how about you? What do you believe about God's ability? What do you really believe in terms of whether God is able or not to bless you, to take care of your needs or anybody else's needs? We should have the assurance that God can do anything and everything we need him to do. Look at what the Bible says about God and you decide. The Bible says that God is almighty. He is omnipotent. He has all power. There is nothing that he cannot do. Uh 
Yeah. We are told that, that God is eternal, that he will never cease to exist. Yeah. He is ever present, meaning that he is always here always. and he is always there yeah. and he is always everywhere yeah. and all at the same time. Yeah. There's so many things that can be said about God to describe him. Most notable is that God is holy. There is not the tiniest inkling of sin about God. As a matter of fact, God hates sin. He avoids it. He, he is loving and just. God is, is gracious and merciful. God is perfect in all of his ways. He knows everything. Yeah, yeah. And the scripture says he does not change. Well, yeah. There should be no question about God's ability to answer your prayers. He is the ultimate creator. He can do whatever you need him to do. He has made ways out of no ways for his people for generations. He can do it for you. He has healed the sick and diseased before. He can do it for you right now. He's given sight to the blind. There are no limitations to what God can do. The leprous man in the text believed that. He told Jesus but he raised an issue with Jesus. He said in essence that Jesus healing him was contingent upon whether Jesus chooses to heal him. He was asking in his own mind, what is Jesus' desire in this matter? What was Jesus' plan for his life? Would Jesus heal him? Or would he do as others have done and tell him that God was punishing him? Would Jesus tell him that he deserved the disease and walk away? Have you not also asked similar questions concerning the Lord's response to your situation? Well, have you not said Will God answer my prayer? Will God meet my needs? Will God get me out of this mess? Have you never thought? I know that he can, but I'm not sure if he will. Have you never thought? I've done so much wrong, I don't know if God will help me. Have you ever said, I've been so disobedient that God won't give me another chance? Have you not thought, have I ignored God so that now he's ignoring me? Will God help me? Somebody may have come here this morning asking, will God help me? All right. Will the Lord meet my needs? Will he have compassion on me like he did the leper? Will he get me through this? Will he get me out of this? Will he do a miracle for me? Will God? That's the question. Will God? Jesus answered your question in the text. Yeah. He said he will. Yeah. Yeah. He will answer your prayer. He will fight your battles. He will meet your needs. He will deliver you. God wants you to know today that he will. Yeah. 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 But the greatest he will is this. He will save your soul. All right. All right. All right. All right. He will 
save you from sin. He will give you eternal life with Him. He will give you unspeakable yeah. joy. Yeah. He will supply your needs and give you peace and strengthen you where you're weak. He will make a way where there is no way. He will whatever you need Him. Yeah. God has promised that he will. Yes, you can count on him. His word is true. The scripture says he is not a man that he should lie. He will. Here, here is a question for you. Will you believe? That he will. Jesus asked a man that question one day and he said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. So what about you? Are you believing that he can, but you're struggling to believe that he will? Will you believe that God cares about you? Will you believe that God wants the best for you? Will you believe that the Lord will fight your battles? Yeah. Will you believe that he will be all that you need him to be? That is the question today. Will you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Will you believe that he died and paid the debts for your sins? Will you believe that he arose from the grave? Will you believe? Scripture says, if you will confess your sins and believe in your heart that yeah. Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior of sinners, you shall be saved. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Heaven shall be your home. Yeah. He will. Yeah. The question is, do you believe yeah. that he yeah. will? As I close, I want to share a story with you, a true story. I don't spend much time on Facebook. But one day this past week, I ran across this piece that a pastor whom I know, Reverend Dr. Sir Walter Mack, pastor of the United Baptist Church in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, posted. I want to share a portion of his testimony with you with the hope that it will encourage you to believe that God will. Okay. Pastor Mac writes, and I quote, we were told that Mother Mac, his mother, had 38 hours to live, but we praise God that she was able to come home Monday from the hospital 45 days later. All right, yeah. All right. Here are the reasons I believe, he says, she survived and was able to return. God kept her alive for his glory. Before leaving, even doctors and nurses came by to say that there was no, this was nothing but a miracle. Man. Some doctors gave up and said there was nothing else they could do. Man. Our family prayed and truly in those 38 hours her body began to heal itself in spite of them withdrawing medications and treatments. Man. All right. I now know what it truly means, he says, when I preach when the doctor says no, Jesus still can say yes. I asked one of the physicians in her second week of hospitalization, how was she doing? His words to me were, wouldn't be surprised if she's not gone by the time I check back this evening. And then he said, she will die in this hospital. Just like that. That was weeks ago. And today she is home. 
yeah. but God. Amen. When the leper asked Jesus if he would heal him, Jesus said, I will. And he did. Amen. Jesus touched that man's diseased body. He laid his healing hands on the leper's infectious, sore-stricken body. And the scripture says he was immediately healed. Maybe the leper was the one who wrote that song, He Touched Me. And oh, what joy has filled my soul. Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah. happened and yeah. now I know he touched me and made me whole. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't I tell you that God will? Yes. He'll be a healer in a sick room. Yeah. He'll be a shelter in a time of storm. Yeah. He'll be a bridge over troubled water, a wheel in the middle of a wheel, water when you're thirsty and bread, when you're hungry, he will. He'll do that for you. He will. God will take care of you. Sevilla yes. Yes. Martin said it in that song, be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Yeah. Beneath his wings, love abide. God yeah. will Woo. take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. And then he says, lean, weary one, upon his breast. God will take care of you. Through every day, not just yesterday, through every day, not just today, but tomorrow as well, or all the way, God will take care of you. He will. That's what Jesus said. He will. That's what I'm counting on. He will. That's what I'm believing. He will take care. You depend on man, man. Not only will he not, he can't take care of you, but God both can and will. So depend on him. You ought to leave here today happy. Knowing that wherever you go, God is with me and he can and will take care of me. You ought to leave happy knowing whatever I am met with, whatever obstacle comes my way, it really doesn't matter because God can and will take care of me. Why are you afraid? Why are you scared? When God has promised he will take care of you and he will touch you and make you whole. Yes. He can. your children. If you took care of your mama and your daddy, he'll take care of you. I'm not worried about whether he can. I'm not even worried about whether he will. He said he will. I take him at his word. That doesn't mean everything's going to go your way. But it means that, that whatever care you have, just cast it upon Jesus and everything will be alright. 
just cast it upon Jesus and everything will be all right. Well, I'm encouraged by Jesus' willingness to take care of us. So I met some folks in my life, they could have helped me, but they wouldn't. They could have blessed me, but they did not. But God did. I didn't deserve it, but he did. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And I'm standing here today a living testimony that he did. I'm not here because I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps. I didn't even have any boots. But God blessed me. And he'll bless you too. He'll bless you too. And that's what the Lord wants you to leave here knowing, believing in your heart. God will take care of me. God will take care of my loved one. God will take care of my family. God will take care of my church. Whatever your need is, know God will take care of you. The doors of the church are open. The choir is going to sing. God will it out. Get it out of your system. God will take care of you. Don't worry about it. God will take care of you. Have peace about it. You don't have to know how God will. Just know that he will take care of you. All right. Jesus said as the male chorus sings, if you will believe Jesus is the Son of God, that he died and paid the debt for your sin and give, he, in that dying and resurrection from the grave, he gives you eternal life with him in heaven. You shall be saved. If there is somebody here today, you came to church, you were not a Christian, but you heard the Lord speak to you today. And you've heard him say, I will save you. I will take you as my child. I will bless you. Then you need to get up from where you are and walk down the front here and meet these deacons as an expression of the fact that God has already saved you. Maybe there's somebody who's already a Christian, a member of another church. You desire to become a member of First Cosmopolitan. We welcome you. We invite you to come as well. Whoever you are, 